What are we doing today? We are doing a... Woo! John is so excited about this video. We are doing a how-to... Oh wait, say that again, I got a ding. On... David? You want to go to Ashtown, Savannah, Georgia? Who's that? David. Here you go. No, we'll talk about that later. We are doing a how-to on the... Pocket penetrometer! I call it the handheld penetrometer. What, what's the, yeah, what's the difference? Because I don't necessarily put this in my pocket. Right. Because it has its own sheath <laughs> that goes on your belt. Oh, right. Very classy engineering, sort of, like a pocket protector. I could see... It could it, double as a pocket protector. You know, frankly. I could actually see myself wearing this while I'm wearing a suit. I at a concrete function. I could see that as with well. either my work boots or my running shoes. Yes, I can see that. Okay, so ASTMC 403, time of setting of concrete mixtures by penetration resistance. So this is our tabletop penetrometer. This is the one you use in the lab. Yep. Uh, and and remember, I, I think it's important we're going to introduce both pieces of equipment but it's also important for us to introduce the different environments. Right. So when you use this bad boy, more often than not, you're in this perfect yeah. environment. You know, what is it, 70 plus or minus whatever, or your relative humidity chamber right. or room, um, or the environment that you well, create. You have it on a nice level area. I mean, it's... So, it's a, it's a wonderful tool, but please bear in mind what you are measuring is what the concrete is going to do in that perfect in environment. Lab environment. Especially if you keep it in a standard environment. Right. Right? And the reason why it's important for you to know that is outside of that laboratory environment, mm -hmm. you have the, the real environment, the real world, the real world, the operational world, whether you're in Colorado or New Zealand, you're going to have an ambient environment. Or New Jersey. Or New Jersey. Here in Colorado, you know, I remember uh, I had one of my bosses, I was working for LaForge years ago, I had one of my bosses come in from France, and I had set up the mix specifically for a 60 degree plus or minus 5 degree window. And as soon as he rolled up, the concrete was going into the mixer, it dropped down to like negative 10 or zero degrees, started snowing and sleeting outside, the concrete fell asleep. Right. So, you know, one of the ways that we saw that the concrete was, was using the handheld penetrometer, where we saw that the time of set was changing dramatically right. because of that temperature change. So. You know the, the real or the imperfect world, the, the perfect world, right? and you compare it to the imperfect world, but what this is about is learning how to use the two. That's what makes me nervous about this, because with this one I feel like it's very intuitive, like you pull it down, you yeah. put it on here. Right. With this, it's like how do you know that you're getting the right pressure, do you know what I mean? I, so, I am excited to learn how to use. It's actually the same method. So let, let's go into describing the equipment first. So our tabletop version is exactly what we said it is. It's a tabletop handheld penetrometer. And it comes with a myriad <laughs> of sizes um, uh, that, that they give with you. And you can do this for different aggregate sizes, different types of cementitious you composites. Use these ones for bigger aggregates? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then if you're doing some neat cement paste or some non sanded grouts, you so know. is the wet sieving necessary if you're using this? Um, the wet sieving goes per this method. This is not per the standard. Oh. Um, at, at least I don't remember. We can look through it. And there is a portion of the standard here that tells you how to, um, you know, use the tabletop. And the method that they describe in the tabletop is akin to using the handheld penetrometer. By the way, we're having a contest. Uh, if you like, subscribe, uh, click the bell for notifications. You'll be entered into a contest to win one of these, and we're giving somewhere around three or seven three. away. Three. Okay, we're giving three of these away. At the but, end of the month. Yeah, they're really awesome pieces of uh, equipment, and after this video, you should know how to use it. So anyway, um, let me do a, a quick procedure. Okay, here we go. 
insert the needle appropriate side depending on the degree of setting of the mortar. So that's what these are for. It's not just the size of the aggregate, it's the setting time. Oh, okay. Uh, gradually, you, gradually and uniformly apply a vertical force downward on the apparatus until the needle penetrates the mortar to a depth of one inch plus or minus one sixteenth. The time required to penetrate to the one oh inch depth shall be 10 seconds plus or minus two seconds. Here's my thing, gradually. Oh, really? oh. That, that's the thing, what does that mean? What do they, it's like slump. It's I a feel practice, like, yes, totally. You know what I mean? Totally, Depending, totally, two totally, people totally, could do it totally, and you can get totally. two totally different and the, answers. Okay, but, but, okay, but listen, listen, that's listen. me. Okay, that, that's, that's another, that's a video for another time. But when it comes down to it, the expectation should not be that any schmo right, can doing do it. either of these. Right, that's true. Especially this, a learning curve, right? You have a calibration, right. you have a finesse to it. You know, I remember saying to somebody once, um, concrete is not just a, a science, it's not just a math, but it's also an art form. Sure. Uh, there is a practiced hand to it. Right. And the important piece of that is that it is a practiced Sure, and especially with slump. It. Right, right. And let's say you had me and let's say you and right. Kevy right. doing mixes. You know, separate mixes, we're doing separate slumps. They're going to be pretty close to those slumps. Sure. But then if we brought in somebody, you know, like, you know, you know, one of the interns that we right, had sure, this sure. summer, last summer, right. it would be all over the place. So right. I, I definitely agree with you. Right. I, it's, there's a learning curve. And once right. you, yes. So uh, choose your, you know, your your penetration tip based on the. Now, if you're using standard concrete, it's this. I believe it's one twentieth of an inch, uh, or was it one tenth of an inch? And then it gives you 0 0.2 inches squared. Um, but you're just inserting it. Do you want to bring a sample over? Okay, so we're actually running some today. Yeah, so you'll get to see the method. But you're you're making this sample. Um, you, we uh, cast concrete as per ASTMC 192. Then we took that fresh concrete. Use a wet sieve to get out the big pieces of the rock, so that because you know if you have big old chunks of rock, you could get a false uh, time to set, especially with these smaller. Yeah, where's the smaller tips? Oh, this is a number four. So you're wet sieving it over a number four, and then consolidating it through different lifts in your vessel. And then what we do is we place it on our platen or platform. And then again, you have that continuous uh, plus 10 seconds, plus or minus right. two seconds. Um, and what you're doing is you're dropping it down to this level right here. There's an, a notch that gives you that one inch plus or minus 16th of an inch. Now, the only difference is now, oh, sorry, sorry, one more second. What we measure here is pounds, and we divide that by the surface area of the tip to give us that, that PSI penetration strength. And correct me if I'm wrong, we're looking for 500 PSI penetration strength for initial set. That sounds right. And 2,000 for the final set? For the final set. Uh, that does sound right, but when you're using it on here, what you want to get down to your 200 right here, right? Right, right, so that's final so set. So that's your final set. Yes. So you're measuring it until you get You're recording the time, you're recording your pounds, right? and then of course you have your surface area, you have three samples, which we have, um, and then, you know, just continuing through, through time. And what we do is, depending on the mix, first we'll start off one time every hour for the first three hours. Mm -hmm. And then we'll drop it down to half an hour segments. Right. And then we'll drop it down to 15 minute segments. Right. And then finally, five minute segments. Right. And you do have to make sure to space them out so that you know each successive measurement is not having an oh, impact right, on right, the right. first measurement. Right. Um, so the only difference between this, well, there's a lot of differences, um, but the, the main difference is uh, you have a a different type of, you're, you're doing the same thing, you're applying that load uh, continuously, 10 seconds plus or minus a second, you still have that one inch notch. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the difference being is control. And right. I think this is what Whitney was referring to. Yes, absolutely. I mean, again, obviously it's a different size piece of equipment, you're measuring pounds here, and then you divide it by surface area, tabletop, calibrated, not calibrated. Um, but the, the difference being is 
you're locked into uh, the movement uh, more so with this. Now, I, I would compare it to when I used to, when I was a kid, I worked as a janitor in a gym and then sure. I, I, I worked up from there. So I was in these, working in this gym for a long time, you had free weights and machines. Sure. And one of the greatest oh, things sure. about free weights, the versatility. It's not the versatility, it's just you had to rely more so more on your stabilizer muscles. And what I meant by mean by that is, you know, you're doing that, you know, God, wonderful shape nowadays. So when you did bench press, if you had been using those machines for years and years and years, and you go to dumbbells and you try to do the same weight, you right. notice yourself shaking because you didn't have those stabilizer muscles. Right. As opposed to if you went to, you know, from dumbbells to a, a fixed right. machine, right. you would have a lot more control because you had those stabilizer right. muscles okay. here. Yeah. So I think that's I what like we're that. talking yeah. about. Yeah. And Great analogy. I, what it takes is practice but more so finesse, and that finesse comes from practice. Sure. So doing it this way, where you're practicing in a controlled environment, right. you have something to compare it to. You have a nice platform, you've got, yeah. The biggest thing is you have something to compare right. it to. Right. And with this controlled environment, the nice platform, and right. this and that, you can take that experience or that expertise to the lab and practice it out there. Right. I guess the most important part is that you need to determine how good you are at it right. before you start passing the judgment. I think it's just for me, I'm so used to the lab one right. that that, scary. I, it, it's a little scary. Like I would be worried about not getting the most accurate, personally, but you've used it many times. So I think, and I was nervous the first time I used this. Right, so, so it, it's, it's all it's learned, learned behavior, yep. muscle memory, and you know, no matter what you do in concrete, it, it is very forgiving and you know, we're making decisions out there, and when it comes to time of sets in the field, a lot of times people use a foot method, where they stamp, they stand on it, and they look for a boot print. Really? Or how that boot print looks. Yeah, or, you know, their foot sinks in. So what we're doing is taking that, and it works. Hey, it works. Right, right. If you're good at it, if you're practiced at it, we're just taking that to the next level, and this right. actually gives you a numerical value that you can attach to. Sure and also attached to maturity measurements that we're going to be talking about in another video. Stay tuned! More on the handheld penetrometer! Yes, and we are, you're going to actually see it in action here shortly. Ding! Now what you're going to see is the sample itself being measured. Um, what we're doing is we've got a six inch diameter cylinder that we cut down so it's about five and a half inches, six inches tall. We filled that up with our wet sieve concrete with three lifts. Um, and I believe you run it once for every uh, two inches squared. Yes. Uh, and then tapped it 10 to 15 times yep. on the side, and then finished it lightly with a wood float. Uh, and now we have our sample that you see here. And what we'll need to do is over time, take the bleed water off of right. it, and can collect it to make a measurement on the amount of bleed water, but that's actually another ASTM. Right, right. This is just a guesstimate on right. that, if you will. Um, okay, so now we've got it on our plate, and yes, that is asphalt. Asphalt isn't that great of material, but hey, you can use it to make nice coasters. Um, so we have it on that. We are, you know, we've got it on the sample. We've got it towards the edge, but we have it more than two diameters away from the edge and any other sample, and then we do that continuous bringing down of that needle to that etched one inch plus or minus one sixteenth of an inch right. in 10 seconds plus or minus two seconds. Okay, we'll do that again for you. Remember to record right. your pounds, you got your telltale. And your time. And your time. Clean off that penetration needle. And set it back to zero. All right, now, uh, this is where Whitney brought up, it's a little bit tricky. And you know we can't do it at the same height. So we had it on the tabletop with our calibrated device. Now using our handheld penetrometer, we're going to put it on the floor, um, and we're going to try and do the same thing where we count right. 10 seconds plus or minus two seconds controlled. The biggest thing is now you have to control your lateral right. deformation, right, which and, is not quite as easy. And in the lab on a six-inch diameter sample. So easy. Right. Like we'll have no problem doing that. But when we go out to the field, you'll see it's a lot right. more difficult. Right. Okay, but as you see, we've got the handheld penetrometer, we've got a telltale on it, put it at the top surface, press it down vertically, 
and then release it. And now on your Telltale, it actually tells you PSI, so you don't have to do the calculations. <laughs> and that's about it. You're going to do this until you max out that needle. And what we're looking for is that initial and final set. Ding! This sheet right here is what we use to do our measurements successive over time. As we said when we first start, we do one hour increments and then we break it up into half hour, 15 minutes and five minutes. So you'll see we take these measurements over time, we'll compare it to the handheld penetrometer and then explain it at the end. Thanks for your time. Ding! So thanks for joining us today. I'm wrapping up this time of set project that we've got going on. Okay, so I'm going to be doing this last reading. Uh, thanks for joining us today and I hope you learned something. How to use that handheld penetrometer versus the tabletop. And one of the fallbacks with using the handheld is you can really only use it to do those early setting times. Once we get to these later setting times, it's really can't be done anymore. So got to take my measurement, but let me know if you got any concrete questions, concrete concerns. Don't forget, we're the experts. Go concrete! Beat asphalt! That's life. That's life. That's what all the people say. You're riding high in April. Shot down in May. But I